Good morning, Ben. Good morning, sir. Good morning, teachers. Good morning. Visitors. Today, it's my distinct honor to introduce Brigadier General Joe Ramirez, United States Army retired, field artillery officer, graduate of Texas A&M, 1979. And yeah, that's just a little while ago, gentlemen. He uh, majored in PE, and though that is not petroleum engineering, that's physical education. He got out of the uh, Corps of Cadets, he was a band, bandsman, and when uh, he just graduated as a distinguished graduate and became an officer in the United States Army, artillery officer, he served in every single billet there is, command-wise, from platoon commander to brigade. He served on every staff billet. In 2010, he assumed the billet as Commandant of Cadets, the 45th Commandant of Cadets at Texas A&M. He is responsible for over 2,500 young men and women, 44 units, and today, again, it's our honor to welcome him. Please give me applause, welcome him. about Texas A&M and the Corps, but more important, I'd like to open it up for any questions you may have about the program we've got up there. And, and what's important about this for me, and I've been here for three days now down in the valley uh, talking to various high schools and recruiting, is that the reason why old guys like me that were in college back when you know dinosaurs ruled the earth is because the future of our country is sitting in this room right here, right now. You are the future of our country or your countries, because I understand there are international cadets in here as well, but you're the future. And that's why old guys like me like to come down here and talk to you guys, because you know I've already been out there and done my time. I have had my opportunity to do what I wanted to do in life. And now I'm back at Texas A&M where I get a chance to work with a bunch of young people that are not much older than you, that are already thinking about what they want to do with the rest of their lives. And for me, it's very rewarding because that organization at Texas A&M gave me every opportunity I got, both in college and afterwards. That kind of started me on a path that I never realized I would go on. There are many of you sitting here today that are probably wondering, what am I going to do with my life here in the next year, two years, three years, four years, five years down the road? What am I going to be doing? with my life as I start thinking about what I want to do. You know, where am I going to go? What am I going to do? And <clears throat> for me, what's important is you guys are the future of this country. You guys are the future of your country. Sitting in this room today is a future president, a future CEO, a future superintendent, you know, a future architect, a future engineer, a future doctor, a future politician. God forbid. <laughs> A future general <clears throat> sitting in this room today. And I know that's kind of heady stuff to think about, but that's exactly what's sitting here because it wasn't that long ago when we were sitting in a room just like this, listening to old guys talk to us about college and where to go and what to do. And you know, for me, probably the biggest thing I was worried about was who I was going to take to the dance on Saturday. This is heavy stuff, but it's important that you start thinking about it now because, again, you are our future. And there's a big responsibility that's going to come with that that's going to be placed on your shoulders here quicker than what you realize. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this and I'll open it up for any questions you may have. We'll start with, we get the video looking. You're awesome. I will, I'll, I'll show you a quick video and then we'll go from there. Yourself, inspire others, and 
succeed on a team? And where can you become fearless in every endeavor? For over 140 years, the Texas A&M Corps of Cadets has developed leaders of character prepared to enter the workforce. Through the Corps experience, cadets learn more about themselves, develop and practice new skills, and become men and women ready to lead in every way. From the battlefield, to the boardroom, and beyond. In the Corps, you experience leading others towards common goals. In the Corps, your world-class education becomes a transformational learning experience. In the Corps, you are part of preserving the traditions that ignite the spirit of Aggieland. Myself. I did not. I don't have the technological savvy to do something like that. I got a great team that does that. It's better than a cup of coffee in the morning, though. To get, you, to get you motivated, get your blood going. How many of you guys know where Texas A&M is? All right. Somebody answer. Where is it? College Station, Texas. College Station, Texas. Exactly. Who knows where College Station, Texas is? Not as many hands. All right. It's somewhere between Houston and Austin. I'll put it to you like that. All right, not too far from here. Uh, it's a big campus. It was opened in 1876. We are now at 142 years old on that campus. In October, we'll, we'll reach 143. Uh, and when that school opened, it was all poor. It was a land grant college, part of the Morrill Act of 1862. And when it opened, everybody that came to AM had to be in the Corps of Cadets. And everybody that was in the Corps when you graduated, had to go into the military. That was the way it was for a long, long time. We have a long, proud military tradition. We provided more officers and men in World War I than any other school. Provided more officers and men in World War II than any other school to include the academies. 20,000, 20,000 Aggies served in World War II. Long, proud military tradition. In 1965, the rules changed. That's when the decision was made to, to say that if you wanted to come to A&M, you no longer had to be in the Corps, and if you wanted to come to A&M and be, and be in the Corps, you no longer had to go into the military. So military service was no longer compulsory. It's like that today. You no longer have to, to join the military if you come into the Corps and join the Corps at A&M. About 40% of our cadets go into the military. We are the largest producer of officers for our country's military outside of the three academies, outside of West Point, Annapolis, and the Air Force Academy. We produce more officers than any other school in the nation, except for those three schools. And we take great pride in that. There are Aggies today serving in Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Korea, Germany, Israel. You pick the country, we've got Aggies serving there. Former cadets serving there. We're proud of that. We're proud of that fact. However, the largest majority of our cadets do not go into the military. And that's a big deal. It's a big deal for us in the fact that we provide opportunities to go into whatever field you want to go into. Our goal is to make you successful in whatever it is you want to do. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I'll fill up the first slide, Kimberly. This is our mission statement. There's a lot packed into this mission statement. Um, and the cadets learned this one early on. Well educated. We put a heavy emphasis on education at Texas a and University and a heavy emphasis on making grades. And why? Well, grades count today. How many of you guys want to go into the military? Okay. Let me tell you, about 40% of your ability to A, commission, and B, get the kind of career field you want in the military is going to rest on your grades. Your academic standing is going to weigh heavily on what you're able to do once you go into the military, if you go into the military at all. So we put a heavy emphasis on academic excellence. 
How many of you guys want to go on to some type of professional school afterwards? Dental school, medical school, law school, veterinary school? How many of you guys want to do something like that? All right, good. Same thing. You know, those schools are very competitive. And if you want to do something like that, it starts with a good grade point average. Uh, so we put a heavy emphasis on academics. I provide free tutoring for our cadets. Free tutoring. Doesn't cost you a penny. I, I pay for it. Pay, pay about $50,000 out of my budget every year to provide tutoring in subjects like calculus, physics, chemistry, biology, engineering, math. I provide the, the, the tutors for our cadets to be successful. In. Last semester, the core's overall grade point average of about 2,450 cadets was a 3.1. Okay, pretty good. 65% of the core posted over a 3.0. 65% posted over a 3.0. In my day, we'd be lucky if 6% made over a 3.0. It's a big deal. So academic excellence. Leaders of character. Character. You're learning that every day here at this school. I know that. Honor, integrity, moral courage, trust. The kinds of things that employers are looking for today, what they want from you, they want to be able to trust you. On top of being able to lead and learn your profession well, they want people they can trust. Men and women of integrity. Men and women of their word. Big deal for us. That character piece is important. And for the poor, it doesn't matter where you come from, what your background is, what your ethnicity, what your religion, what your gender, it doesn't matter. When you put that uniform on, you are expected to embody a leader of character. Period. That's what you represent when you put that uniform on. You represent 142 years of the core cadets when you put that uniform on and all the character that goes with that. Big deal for us. And global leadership challenges. We live in a global environment today. How many of you sitting here today are from another country other than the United States? You're living today in this environment in a global environment. You are exposed daily to people from other countries, from other cultures, and from other perspectives on the world. And our goal is to expose as many of our cadets to that as possible. All right? Seven of my last 10 years in the military, I was either, either deployed or I was serving overseas. And when you live in another country, when you're a guest in another country, you have to understand the dynamics of operating in that environment. All right? It's not about, I'm going to go in, I'm an American, and you got you to do what I say. Not the way it works. Not the way it works. They've got their own perspectives on things, and we need to learn that. I provide opportunities for cadets to go abroad every year. This May, I'll be sending 26 cadets on each of three excursions. Germany, Poland, Ukraine, Georgia, and Israel. I do that every year. It's free for the cadets. All they have to have is a passport. I send them there to look at the four elements of national power. Diplomacy, information, military, and economics. All right, so it's not just a sightseeing tour. It's you go to learn the strategic importance of that country or those countries in the United States. And why we need them as strategic partners. Last year, we did Australia, Brazil, and England, France. We've been to China, Korea, India, Chile, Argentina, Mexico, um, and all over Europe. And we do that because we want to expose our cadets as much as possible to that global environment. Again, it's pretty inexpensive. It doesn't get much better than nothing. All right? A lot packed into that mission statement there, and a lot that, that we try to do for you to make you successful post-graduation. Next slide. I just go on, go on to the end. All right. No, back one more. There you go. No, there you go. Right there. Perfect. You're going to learn a lot in college. You're going to learn a lot at Texas A&M. You're going to learn a lot in Fort Cadets. And I say you, you're going to learn a lot of good life lessons. And the first life lesson you're going to learn is life ain't fair. Now, the good thing is this school, unlike many of the others that I talked to, has probably already taught you that lesson. Life ain't fair. All right? We don't give you anything just for showing up. Those days are over with when you get to Texas A&M and you join the board. My guess is you're probably learning that here as well. All right, so 
But what's also important about that is everything you get there, you earn. You've got to go out and earn it and work for it. And that includes your grades. <coughs> everything you get, you're going to earn. We have a corps of almost 2,500 cadets. There's one corps commander, one, who this year happens to be a young man commissioning into the United States Marine Corps. Right? One. And we don't just give it to him, he earned it. He earned it in the classroom, he earned it in the poor, he earned it in, in organizations across the campus, the leadership he displays every day, but he earned it. One guy gets to command the entire corps. All right, we have 10 major unit commanders, 10 out of a corps of 2,500. We have three Army brigades, three <coughs> Marine regiments, three Air Force wings, and the Fight for Texas Aggie Band. Only 10 get to lead those outfits. Stand up, Kimberly. This young lady right here, Kimberly Berry, was a member of the Corps of Cadets just three years ago. She works for me now in recruiting. She commanded one of our Air Force wings. Had about 250 cadets under her command. Uh, just goes to show you, only 10, and she earned it. We didn't give Kimberly anything. She earned it. And I'll probably have her come up and say a few words here at the end and talk from a, a, a perspective that's a little bit closer in age to you than me. She's She's about two years younger than me, so. You're going to learn a lot. Disappointment, frustration, and failure. You're going to learn a lot about that, all right? Because that's life. How many of you guys here box? Everybody should. Don't you still have the boxing ring here? Still do, guys. All right. You guys still box? How many of you guys box? And every hand on the floor. I, I thought a room full of Marines, you guys would, would love to box. I grew up boxing. I grew up in New City, and I grew up boxing. I love to box. And I use a lot of adages from boxing when I talk about leadership and, and life. And let me give you one that, that I like to use a lot, and that is getting knocked down is life. Getting back up and getting back into the fight is living. Everybody gets knocked down in life. Everybody. I have been knocked down multiple times. When you get knocked down, you have to decide for yourself, am I going to lay there and throw in the towel and say I quit, or am I going to get back up and dust myself off and get back into the fight that we call life? You're going to learn that at Texas A&M University. That nothing is easy, it's hard, you got to work at it, and there will be disappointment, there will be setback, there will be failure. I've had multiple failures in my life, multiple. And it's up to you to decide whether you're going to let those failures stop you from achieving your goals and your dreams. And every one of you has got them. Every one of you is probably already thinking about what you want to do when you leave here. What, what your ultimate goal would be in life. You're going to learn all that. And these are a lot of good values here that will serve you well once you get out there in the workforce. Once you get out there, employers are looking for guys like you that have all of these as part of who you are. Next slide. All right, I got two more slides left, so hang with me. This is a quote from a speech that Theodore Roosevelt gave to the graduating class of the U.S. Naval Academy in 1910. And I like this quote, and I use it often, especially when I'm talking to cadets who are getting ready to graduate, because I think it's as relevant today as it was back then. Now, I want everyone of you to look at me for a second. If you remember nothing else, I want you to remember this today, okay? And you're hearing it from, from an old general here. Today, in our country, this is not the time for our country to be producing the average of good citizens. We need to be producing great citizens and great leaders. That is the expectation for you. We need you to be great. Not average, not good. That's no longer good enough. The competition is stiff out there. And if you want to go out there and succeed and be the leader that you know you can be, that we need you to be, we need you to be great. Great citizens and great leaders. Every day you ought to be thinking about being great, about excellence in everything that you do. Why? Well, the competition is pretty stiff out there, folks. On the day that you graduate from college, tens of thousands of others will be graduating that same day, competing for the very positions that you, that you want. And what will make the difference is good, to great. We need you to be great citizens and great leaders. Old guys like me who have already been out there and done our time, who have made our mark, <coughs> depending on you as the future 
to be great. In fact, we need you to be great. And that's a big responsibility to put on your shoulders, especially at this age. That's just kind of the way it is. It ain't going to be much longer. And let's assume you all come up to Texas A&M, and you all go to school there, and you all join the Corps. In four very, very quick years, you will be crossing the stage at Reed Arena on the A&M campus. We're going to hand you a diploma. We're going to say congratulations. You're going to walk across that stage, and bam, the rest of your life is right there. It's staring you right in the face. And our goal is to make sure you're ready for that day. But more importantly, our goal is to make sure that you're the great citizen and the great leader that we need you to be starting that day. Our country's future depends on it. Be great citizens. Be great leaders. Do not settle for average or good. Hoorah! Hoorah! All right, next slide. I keep forgetting I'm talking to Marines. All right, it ain't easy, but now I'm talking to a bunch of guys here in the Marine Military Academy. Uh, I know you guys understand what it means uh, to deal with a, a pretty rigorous lifestyle. It ain't easy. There's nothing easy about, about being in court at A&M. Um, all of us that have been through that experience can sit here and tell you war stories about some of the experiences we had, but more importantly, what that meant for us in developing us and turning us into men and women of integrity and honor. But it's designed that way because that's how you develop good leaders. Next slide. All right. Uh, we didn't have the teams. How many of you guys have been to a cemetery? Everybody should raise your hand. I'm pretty sure everybody's been to a cemetery once. In the cemetery, there's these big stone blocks. And what do we call those? Tombstones, Tombstones exactly. So you look at a tombstone, it's got two things on it. It's got the name, and it's got the dates. And every tombstone has two dates on it, right? So What's the first date? Birth. Second date? Yeah. yeah, exactly. So you look at a tombstone, you say, okay, the guy's name is Ramirez. Let me look and do the math. The guy lived to be 179 years old. Obviously led a great life, and you move on. Everybody who looks at a tombstone always overlooks one little thing on that tombstone, and that's that little line between those two dates that we call the dash. Why is that dash important? Well, that dash represents every day, every week, every month, and every year of your life between that first date and that second date. That dash is your life. So I'm going to ask you guys today, right here, sitting in this room, trying to stay awake as you're thinking about the future, how are you going to live your dash? What are you going to do with your dash? One of these days, when they put one of those tombstones over you, what are people going to say about your dash? Because our hope is, our goal is, and I can guarantee you, all the adults sitting in this room, our hope is you live a dash that has an impact. You live a dash that makes a difference, especially in the dashes of others. That's a dash well lived. And you need to start thinking about that today. What am I going to do with my dash? How am I going to live my dash going into the future? It's all up to you. Like I said, we're asking you to be great. And that's a big, big responsibility. Asking you to be great and live a dash that's filled with greatness and has an impact. Because the future of our country is going to be in your hands. One of these days, when I'm sitting on my back porch and I'm fully retired and I'm smoking a cigar and having a beverage, <laughs> I want to be able to say, see all those great leaders out there? I had a small hand in them. And helping these young men and these young women go out there and become the great citizens and great leaders in our communities, our state, and our nation. I had a small hand in them. And I could sit there and enjoy my cigar and my beverage whole lot better as a result. The future's yours. The future's going to be in your hands here sooner than what you realize. And I want you guys to start thinking about what kind of dash you're going to live in the future and what kind of impact you're going to make with your dash. If they put one of these over Joe Ramirez tomorrow, Joe Ramirez can say unequivocally, I'm happy with the way I live my dash. And my dash began at Texas A&M University in Fort Cadet. 
grew up in inner city Houston, a gang banger, got in trouble with the law, did a lot of things. As a young man, I'm not very proud of it. I probably spent more time at the police station than my parents would have, would have liked. My brother went to prison for two and a half years, and I was right behind him, doing everything wrong in my life, despite the fact that I had a mom and dad that loved me and just wanted me to be the first member ever of my family to go to college. And I got an opportunity to go to Texas A&M, an opportunity I never thought I would get. And I got that opportunity, and I said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm going to give this thing a try, this college thing a try. Because I was not even thinking about college. College wasn't on my radar. You know what I was going to do? Enjoy the Marine Corps. The most macho thing you can do in my neighborhood is become a Marine. There were only two people that would walk through my, my neighborhood, and nobody would mess with me. One was the priest, was well, anybody going to mess with the priest? And the other one was a Marine in his dress uniform. And those guys, nobody messed with those guys. That was my goal. And I got a chance to go to college, and I took it. I said, okay, I'll give this thing a try. <coughs> Changed my life. It, it saved my life. It gave me every opportunity that I ever thought I had. And the same thing can happen for you. A decision you make here in the next year or two can potentially change your entire life. <coughs> the only reason I joined the United States Army is because at the end of my sophomore year, the Army ROTC program gave me a two-year scholarship. And I needed the money. I needed the money. And so I took it. And I said, I'll join the Army if they'll pay for my last two years of school. Save my family a whole lot of money. At the age of 20, I signed with a dotted line and said, I'll sign up to do four years active duty if you'll pay for the last two years of my college. It saved my family a lot of heartache with respect to trying to pay for my school. 20 years old, I signed. Thought I'd do four years, why well, I'm staying for 31. I've been all over the world, I've had the opportunity to lead soldiers in both peacetime and wartime, and I wouldn't have changed a bit. All that happened because I took the opportunity to go to college and become a member of the board cadets at Texas a and University. Same thing can happen for you. Every one of you needs to start thinking about what kind of dash you want to live going into the future. It's all going to be on your shoulders here real quick. How many seniors have got in the room? How many of you have applied to college already? How many of you have been accepted already? Okay, good. How many juniors? Okay, your time is coming up pretty quickly. All you seniors, I mean, you're going to blink an eye. You're going to be out of here. All you juniors, it's coming quickly. How many sophomores? Same thing. Start making your grades in half. Freshmen? Good. Good. All right. It's coming quick, guys. It's coming quick. And all we want for you is to live a dash that makes an impact, that makes a difference.